We have this morning on this Thursday morning, Mr. Larry Whitford. We want to thank you for writing an article for the Steer Houston Times about your wife, Robbie, as our super survivor star. Your story was very informational about the carriage bridge. Would you like to tell us about the carriage bridge for those who missed reading the paper? Sure, Wilton. Uh, carrying bridge is a service that we learned about very quickly after Robbie received her diagnosis of cancer. It is a, uh, a free service that is available whereby a person can go on to the internet to carrybridge.org website and, and establish a, a communication system, if you will, or a web page uh, regarding <coughs> the individual who, who has the medical problem. And this allows uh, for the family of or care providers of the individual to post uh, from day to day or time to time uh, status reports on, on that individual and then all of your friends and relatives as they become aware of it can uh, go to that website and, and read what the status is. For example, if you, if you just had a a test that day or something of that nature you can post it and then also it allows those individuals if they that are reading your website family friends etc if they're so interested they can leave a message on the website for the patient and, and their uh, care provider it's an excellent communication tool as compared to uh, having to make numerous phone calls etc etc and uh, we, we highly recommend the Caring Bridge. It has been a vital, vital link, probably the most vital link that we have as far as communicating our message to our family and friends and in turn their message back to us. Okay. And I've been collecting, that's Caring Bridge, and I was called a Caring Bridge, which Caring Bridge. Uh, you have been a pillow of support for Robbie since August of 2009, and she had done quite well. What has been your support? Well, I appreciate that compliment. Uh, I, probably, I, I've got several things that I would attribute my support to, but Robbie herself had, has been a major source uh, of support by the, by the way that she has uh, accepted this uh, disease, the courage that she has offered, the strength, the uh, there's never been any question in her mind, and consequently not in my mind, as to, you know, that we want to make the most out of the journey. Uh, also, uh, our faith in God and in God's plan. We, we both believe, well, our, our faith was, was created well before this circumstance was prevented, uh, presented to us, but we believe that God has a plan for everyone, and it's a matter of looking, uh, trying to find the vision to see that plan, uh, accepting the, the courage to, or, or gathering the courage to accept the plan, and then looking for the strength to carry the plan out. Also, <clears throat> family and friends, and here I would refer back to Caring Bridge as well as other sources, but the, the support that we've received in, in numerous forms, calls, cards, prayers, written messages, etc., through Caring Bridge. That, that has been a tremendous strength to us. You speak of having GPS system guided your decision during your journey with cancer. Tell us about this, please. Well, I, uh, back in a couple of months ago, we received uh, a couple of really uh, bad pieces of news from our doctor. One, that Robbie's cancer had spread to the brain. And number two, that the current chemo plan that we were on was, had proven to be ineffective. And so I immediately conveyed this information even while we were still at the doctor's office. Uh, I conveyed this information to my daughter, Laura, who in turn posted it in her own words on the website. <clears throat> that would be the Caring Bridge website. 
And she concluded by saying something to the effect that while this may sound like bad news, we, we view or look for the good in the news. And that was simply that, <clears throat> number one, the doctor was optimistic that radiation could be, not would be, but could be very effective on the brain tumor. And that if it was, then it would uh, help to greatly reduce some of the symptoms and, and concerns and problems that the brain tumor uh, was causing to run. So rather than dwell on the negative, we, we were focused on the positive. But <clears throat> for the next 24, 36 hours, as, uh, sometimes even as I would wake up in the middle of the night, I got to thinking that a lot of people might not understand us taking such a position even to the point that they might suggest we're in denial about, about the whole situation that we're in. And so I woke up on a Saturday morning and the story was on my mind about traveling with a GPS or a global positioning system and how, in effect, that related to our travel. And we consider this entire uh, cancer process a journey. <clears throat> So I got to thinking about the typical GPS that I have in the car, and you, you program your, de first thing you do is program, program in your destination. Well, we already know the destination. That this, you know, we're not in denial, the, the doctor is right up from the very beginning that, that this is a curable form of cancer that will eventually uh, take Robbie's life. But, <clears throat> quality of life than the quantity of life. So, <clears throat> I thought further, when you're traveling with your GPS after having put in your destination, if you make a wrong turn, you know, if you've got a GPS, you know what I'm talking about, but it's got that little pesky voice that comes on and tells you, you know, you're, you've made a wrong turn, make a U-turn, recalculating, blah, blah, blah. Well, God will actually send you a more subtle message if you're deviating from his intended course. But it's not going to be quite as obvious as that little voice. So you, you've got to be in tune and, and aware and listening for that. And uh, <clears throat> so the more I thought about it, I said, well, we're traveling with the GPS, but it is God's positioning system rather than a global positioning system. That's, that's the GPS story. I noticed you and Robbie have traveled, gone to ball games, and seem to have kept up with normal activities instead of stopping by while Robbie went through treatments. Can you reflect on that for us and how well Robbie has done? And you've already covered part of it, but if you have anything else to say. Well, that was an option, of course. You could, uh, the day that you received your diagnosis, you could. You could uh, hang up your cleats, so to speak, and just just wait for the uh, the end of the journey. But Robbie said <clears throat> before the words had ever even gotten cold that the doctor told us, she said, uh, "I want to fight this." Uh, and in fact, the doctor said, "It's your choice. If you, you know, you could you can do nothing, and consequently, you would have X amount of months remaining, or you can uh, seek treatment and." reasonable expectations expect this kind of return on them. So obviously from that day until now, our number one priority, our, our number one thing in life is, is centered around our treatment plan. But as we learn about the treatment plan, and we've been on four or five different ones now, we kind of look for windows of opportunity within the plan, between treatments, etc and try to continue doing the things that we enjoyed very much before, before our diagnosis. And, and certainly going, uh, not just to football, but Titans football, has, has been one of, one of our, our greatest pleasures. Traveling has been another. In fact, when we got the diagnosis, we had had a list of things that we had wanted to do for a number of years, a bucket list, if you will. And we had, just before the diagnosis, we had completed a cruise through the Panama Canal. We had one additional cruise 
on our list, and that was to go to Alaska. So we got the diagnosis in August, and we went ahead immediately afterwards and booked our Alaska cruise for April of, of the next spring. And uh, we, we had to modify the treatment plan slightly, but we made that trip. We, we, wasn't, we, wasn't, we were not ready to, to scratch it off the list yet. And since then, we've made several other little travel trips. Yeah, we have to plan them around the treatment, as I said earlier, but uh, uh, it, it's indefinite. And, and uh, if you anticipate it, that it is, you, you, you might lose out the best part of your life. When I see Robbie, in fact, we had her in our home a few days ago, and we noticed the uh, her winning spirit, her big open smile. Any comments on that? Well, <clears throat> Robbie, Robbie has always been a positive person, uh, and always has been a fighter when the cause was was one that she believed in. If anything, quite frankly, this the, the cancer, which is a terrible thing, I, I don't want to minimize it at all, but if anything, the cancer has has opened our eyes to say that every day, every day has something to offer. And, you know, you, it's kind of like the glass being half full or half empty. It depends on how you look at it. But as I told somebody one day, uh, previously maybe in taking a trip, you're can't wait till you get to your destination. Now, if we take a trip, uh, it's exciting just to see what's around the next curve. So, it, it's all in the attitude, uh, but I think the attitude would probably be impossible if you didn't have uh, faith in, and if you didn't believe. And, and probably those are two key words for us, is believe and have faith. And the last question, what advice do you have to give to others about what you're going through and you've attitude and you brought it out so plain? Do you have anything else that you would like to add? Well, I think it's important, I think it's very important to be completely honest with yourself. You, you, you can't, certainly I know God is capable of But we need to, to be completely honest and, and look at what the statistics say are most likely going to happen uh, in the situation that you're in. And as I said earlier, in, in our case, we were told right up front that this, this cancer responded well to treatment, but it was not curable and it could not be operated. So we've never denied that. Uh, at the same time, that doesn't mean that, that you can't be optimistic and positive, that is, seeking the, the best the best travel route to get there. So that, that would be my, my word of advice is, you know, remain as positive as you can be uh, and at the same time not losing sight of what, what is actually real. And, and probably, uh, well, to, uh, another thing, uh, at least we do this, we openly talk about the situation, we openly talk about the end of the journey, and uh, so you know, I, I think it's I think it's important to openly talk about it to to your whomever you're providing care for, as well as uh, to your immediate family. At least and we've all we have four kids, and we've all openly talked to each and every one of them, making sure that they completely understand you know the situation and where we are. So uh, that that would be my advice. That was very good, Larry. We appreciate you being here this morning. And I've noticed one thing, and you brought it out very well. We know that God can, yes, you're healed. Just snap your finger. But nobody has blamed God yet. And we realize that he has his way of doing things. Absolutely. And we're not to question it. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know why this was placed upon us, but uh, if our journey, if this message today 
can't, can't help somebody else, and you know that's part of God's plan, and that's part of our reason for being.